Hello there my fellow Hollow Table Heroes and welcome to another Rise of the Relics Territory Battles video guide. In this one I'll be attempting my first ever Arriva Special Missions on Tatooine. Uh, so as always I'll cover first the modifiers, then talk about some of the key mechanics and show you the mod. And then obviously do the gameplay, so if you're just interested in the actual gameplay, as always there will be YouTube chapters below, so you can just skip through to the section you are interested in. Otherwise, let's first kick off with the modifiers. Now, if you don't know, actually, Grand Inquisitor and Second Sister, they're both hero units. So if you are using here a Second Sister as one of your Inquisitors, which I am not, she and Grand Inquisitor will benefit from the hero bonus. It's not that great, but hey, every little helps. So whenever this character uses an ability, they recover some health and protection, and as well deal bonus damage equal to 2% of their max health to all enemies. A little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra health and recovery is always nice, but you know, it's not going to be anything game breaking at this point. Now, luckily, the modifier here for the enemy is not game breaking as well. As you can see, it's at level 3 at full strength, the bonus they get, so we didn't really feel any operations uh, at this point. Uh, so they do get a random pirate there summoned and this is pretty much it to be honest. The pirate there, he doesn't do anything, he just stands there to be honest, so you can just ignore him uh, for the most part. However, what you will notice is the actual planet modifier that applies to both you and your enemy, which is called the Dune Sandstorm. And what this modifier will do, it will apply damage over time on all units at the end of every unit's turn. So those damage over times will quickly uh, rake up. So the overall strategy is keep these damage over times under control um, because Jawas, they have no way of cleansing themselves and eventually they will die off from damage over times before you do. So this really is the name of the game, it's outlasting Jawas. Now speaking of Jawas, there are probably multiple ways to go about modding. Uh, the overall mod strategy I decided for is max protection and speed. I'm not focusing on offense, I'm not trying to defeat anybody uh, because you just want to kind of spread your damage and let damage over times do all the damage for you and max protection including arrow max protection uh, arrow on everybody uh, because the more protection you have obviously the more hits you can take because damage over time they deal a damage based on health in terms of jawas there is some threat on there uh, like obviously there um, java is the biggest threat well, second biggest threat in my opinion uh, because he's got an aoe that has 25 percent chance to stun units it's only 25 percent chance so you know in most cases one maybe two of your units uh, will get stunned however you also have dacha with an ability block and i think Dacha is the biggest threat because getting stunned one or two units you know between grand inquisitor and fifth brother you have way to dispel those stuns uh, whereas if you get ability blocked that's going to be a bigger problem so personally i think you know getting dacha under control is going to be the key now these guys are very fast so you won't be outrunning them no matter how much speed you put your inquisitor so instead i would just recommend load them for protection so they can take lots of damage over times and then you will be able to outlast them oh anyway i'll show you the detailed mods for each inquisitor i just want to give you the overall strategy of uh, what's happening here uh, so I was doing research, some people suggested modding for Tenacity, but then Sixik uh, posted on Discord server there the actual stats for Jawas, and they all have like over 100%, like 115% potency, so you'd really need a lot of Tenacity on your guys uh, to actually, uh, you know, have a good chance to resist something, but I think it's not really worth it because getting, you know, Tenacity into the 160-170% uh, range on these guys will be very challenging so I think better focus on protection because anyway it's only 25% chance there uh, to stun and I think Dutch has got 50% chance to ability block so you know it's not 100% of the time okay let's now talk about uh, the individual characters Grand Inquisitor he's in the leading slot he has to be and that's absolutely great uh, so his AoE here is probably the most important ability here uh, in this event because uh, it will dispel all debuffs on Inquisitor, equalize health and protection, recover some additional health and then also land ability blocks. Uh, now unfortunately the cooldown on this ability is quite high for, but there are ways to get quicker uh, to use it and that's because of his unique uh, be with his unique, uh, what's it called? Compassion leaves a trail. Yeah, there we go. So, the first time each enemy reaches six stacks of purge, Grand Inquisitor takes a bonus turn. So, that will be the overall strategy. Those, it's not going to be let's quickly take down one Java, let's quickly take down another Java. But the key, was, the key will be 
get six stacks of purge on one java then get six stacks of purge on another java so you're just kind of going one at a time spreading the purge on everybody inquisitor is taking bonus turns doing his aoe to dispel heal up and this will keep your guys alive and also the benefit of spreading the damage across jawas will be that eventually they will die for damage over time very quickly in a sequence rather than just you know focus down on one focus down on another so this was my overall strategy here and obviously grand inquisitor plays a big part uh, in this whole thing uh, in terms of mods as mentioned before already at the beginning i just focused on speed sets and then no health bonuses as little as possible because the more health the more damage damage over times will do to you and then all four protection primaries where possible just to stack those guys with lots of protection so they can survive okay so we got seven sister up next she's another key unit here with some great abilities like enemy intelligence will heal the target uh ally so whoever is lowest on health and protection most likely nine sister you will want to heal her up you gain foresight so you can evade a couple of attacks here and there and critical damage immunity and then her other special ability is very good as well because it lands an ability block uh, on one of the Jawas. Now, you won't be able to outrun Jawas, they're too fast, I'm afraid. However, if they do start off, you know, with a couple of AoEs, uh, this would then give turn meter over to your seventh sister because of her unique uh, patience. Uh, she's got 20% chance to gain 100% turn meter every time your uh, allies are critically hit. So hopefully she'll get quickly, you know, this 100% turn meter and then she can go ahead and ability block Java of your choice. Who you ability block, it will slightly depend obviously on, uh, you know, who hasn't gone yet, who hasn't used their AoEs yet and things like that. Uh, but definitely, you know, good unit. Same thing like with Grand Inquisitor. As little health as possible and just mod for, you know, max protection and speed. So all four protection primaries as on everybody. Moving on, we've got 8th Brother. His AoE can be useful uh, because it can land the uh, burning uh, and you know this adds a little bit more damage on top of damage over times these Jawas their health is very high um, so you know damage over times plus burning hopefully will help you to get through them quicker rather than just you know with pure damage uh, from your guys uh, in terms of the mod same thing speed sets protection primaries make him as durable as you can uh, and then fifth brother another key unit here I actually made him the fastest uh, here just because he's got some cool abilities so this ability right here, uh, when you use it, um, it will give you extra protection up based on the amount of purge the target has. So a little bit of extra against survivability for your team. It's not protection recovery, but a little bit damage more you can take. Then his AoE is great as well. He's got an AoE dispel. Uh, so, you know, you can dispel the taunt, you can dispel the stealth, whatever you like here. However, most importantly, with Fifth Brother, whenever he uses a special ability, he will dispel, dispel stun on all allies. That's why I made him the fastest, just in case, you know, maybe Grand Inquisitor or somebody gets stunned, he can go and dispel. Now, if uh, Fifth Brother gets stunned, then, you know, you, you can dispel or somebody else, then maybe Grand Inquisitor can dispel. So you got two ways of dispel. So as long as um, both don't get stunned in the beginning, I think you should be good to go. But it's hard to say it was my first attempt, really. So the more I play, the more we'll see how RNG plays the part of success race. So there you go, Fifth Brother, lots of protection as much as I could and speed as well. Uh, moving on, Nine Sister, she's really here, to be honest, to take hits. She's acting like a punching bag, to be honest. Now, this special is kind of nice because um, uh, it will dis it will consume all stacks of Purge, and for each stack uh, of Purge Dispel, you land damage over time on the target and heal over time on Nine Sister. So a little bit more damage over time, so you can hopefully take those Javas out fast. Because she's your, the main punching bag, just something I wanted to highlight, that whenever uh, Inquisitor Ally takes a turn, uh, Nine Sister will be recovering 5% health so a little bit of extra recovery there for her so she should be able to last throughout the battle I think uh, without uh, much issues because we are not modding her for her health damage over time won't do a whole lot of damage to her so there you go as mods as goes as you can see lots of protection speed as well as much as I could all right time to hop in the battle and let me just show you my first attempt how it went uh, so there you go, Jawas go first, and at this point they did stun Grand Inquisitor, and as you can see, Seven Sister there, she did gain 100% turn meter. So no matter how fast you make uh, your Seven Sister, if she doesn't gain this bonus turn meter from her unique, she will not be able to outrun Jawas, and all five Jawas will get a turn before you. 
Now in this case, uh, we had uh, two Jawas go, so Scavenger did his AoE, then Jawa did his AoE, stunning my Grand Inquisitor. Uh, so what I actually will do is uh, ability block um, their uh, Dacha. I don't mind if Nebit gets a taunt because I can dispel it with Fifth Brother. Anyway, I just want to make sure that Dacha doesn't get his AoE out and ability block my guy. So definitely prioritize ability blocking Dacha if you can. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, I'm not going to use this Paliette because Nebit didn't taunt. So I'm just going to go ahead here, use the special. And because I use the special, I dispel there the stun on Grand Inquisitor. That's why I really wanted my Fifth Brother to be the fastest so he can hopefully dispel stuns. Uh, we get some protection up as well, and I'm just going to use basic here. I will save the, the uh, Inquisitors, um, Grand Inquisitors AoE dispel when I get a little bit more damage over time. I got four now. I was thinking, do I keep it or not? I'm like, well, might as well just go ahead and use it, and you know, hopefully we can get lots of bonus turns once we do get six stacks of purge on everybody. Here we go. Got six stacks of purge on Nebit. And this gives a bonus turn to Grand Inquisitor. Let's go ahead, try to get six stacks of Purge on Javanir. Engineer, we did. Another bonus turn for Grand Inquisitor, which means on his next turn, he'll be able to use the AoE again. So that's what you want to do. Because those two guys already have six stacks, six stacks of Purge, I'm going after Java now. Try to get six stacks of Purge over him. Let's go ahead, heal up. Uh, probably Nine Sister. Uh, she's out of protection already. So let's just go ahead, heal her right back up. And I'm going to go ahead here, do an AoE, uh, dispel all the buffs, and keep going after Java, just trying to get uh, over their stacks of purge. Now, the good thing, as you will notice from Java Scavenger, looks like he's. Um, let's do another cleanse here already. Perfect. They're starting dying off from damage over time. So as you notice, there are no thermal detonators really being stacked on us. So it looks like. Java Scavenger's unique that would stack loads of thermal detonators has been kind of nerfed uh, in this particular mission. So you don't really have to worry about those thermal detonator stacking or your Inquisitor as you're pushing through. And this is pretty much it. As you can see, Java just die from damage over time. No issues whatsoever. And once you get to Kenobi, to be honest, you've done the, the hard part. Kenobi is not, not really match for five Inquisitors here. You can even stun him. So he's not a real Galactic Legend per se. Doesn't look like he has all of his abilities maxed out. So you just keep pounding him with everything you've got. Land all those debuffs. Uh, there we go. We can even blind him there. Uh, with the uh, uh, Eight Brothers AoE, he blinds Jedi. So even when Kenobi that gets a turn, he won't be able to do a whole lot. And it's pretty much it. We can go ahead and even stun him. There we go. And, you know, he's stunned, ability blocked. Healing immunity, any kind of debuff under the sun imaginable. We landed on Kenobi, so now we just keep going here. Make sure we dispel all those damage over time whenever we can with Grand Inquisitor. And, you know, Kenobi is almost down for the count. Uh, we'll see damage over time won't do much damage to him because he's a Galactic Legend. But other than that, you know, we'll get through him one more hit. And down he goes. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. Maybe I had good RNG. I don't know. Um, as I'll be playing through over the coming weeks, replaying this mission, I will be again be recording uh, every my attempt and then just maybe after three, four times, I'll do like an updated video just showing you different bits of RNG that I had and how I adapted my strategy. But this was the overall modding and, uh, you know, mechanic strategy I went in. It went uh, really well, as you can see. So hopefully, uh, you know, it's not going to be as bad uh, RNG fast as the Kiari Mundi mission was. So the initial impressions definitely seems a lot more straightforward and easy. There's a little bit of RNG involved, but as long as you mod your guys for protection, you should be able to outlast Jawas. Alright guys, hopefully you find this video useful and helpful. Let me know in the comments below or on my Discord server. But until then, have fun, enjoy your life and may the RNG be with you, my friends.